Historically, composite structures are manufactured using a technique called hand layup. Basically, trained technicians lay up one layer of composite at a time in order to produce a composite structure. Past few decades, automated fiber placement or AFP as well as automated tapering or ATL has become popular especially to manufacture large aerospace structures such as wing skins and fuselages. AFP and ATL has lots of benefits such as improving the repeatability, reliability of the layup, accuracy, reducing the scrap rate and also the material efficiency. However, when the part complexity increases, especially for small parts, the benefits of AFP and ATL diminishes, creating a gap requiring us to look for a new technology for high-rate manufacturing of small, complex parts. To bridge this gap, we have integrated fiber patch placement, or FEP in short, to our manufacturing technology portfolio. With FEP, we can automate manufacturing of a complex part with high precision, enabling high-rate manufacturing regardless of the complexity of the part. Designing for FEP requires fundamental shift in how we approach designing a continuous fiber composite part. In this video, we will go through the steps required for designing and optimizing a fiber patch placement composite part. We will use the mouthpiece of this serpentine inlet duct as our example. Fiber patch placement has an advantage because it is an automated process and has high repeatability. The pick and place robot that places the patch has a pliable silicone foam end effector which can conform to the geometry of the tool surface, thus placing patches with minimal to no bridging or wrinkling. It also can place a patch per second, reducing the manufacturing times. Hence, we are able to manufacture high volume, high complex parts using this technology. The FPP system is comprised of three separate modules that are all integral to our creation of composite parts. The first module is a feeding unit where we place our rolls of material. The second module holds an ultrasonic blade that cuts out patches of material as specified by our Artist Studio program. We can create patches as small as 0.5 inches by 2 inches and as large as 2 inches by 9 inches. For smoother surfaces, larger patches help us save on manufacturing time and increase the strength of the part, while small patches are perfect for matching tight contours on tool surfaces. After leaving the cutting station, the patches pass through our first inspection system, which checks the dimensions of the patch. Then we enter the third module, which is made up of two separate robots. The four-axis robot holds a gripper made of a pliable foam that can match any tool surface. The six-axis robot holds a tool that will serve as the base for our inlet duct mouth parts. As patches are picked up by the four-axis robot, a second inspection system checks the alignment of the patches on the gripper. If the patches are misaligned on the gripper, the robot will realign itself on the way to the tool to match the position as specified in the Artist Studio program. To activate the tackiness of the material so that patches stick to the tool, we have an IR heater as well as an internal gripper heater. Once the layup is complete, we can remove both the tool and the part together for curing. Programming a fiber patch laminate and simulating the robot movements are done offline using a software called Artist Studio. The programmer is given the part design, the stacking sequence of the laminate, and the material data. There are a few parameters that are native to fiber patch laminate. For example, the patch dimensions, by default, Artist Studio programs patches with no gaps and overlaps. But if needed, a programmer can introduce gaps and overlaps into the laminate. The smallest entity in a fiber patch laminate is a patch. Collection of patches form a chain. Multiple chains form a sublayer, which is equivalent to a ply. Collection of sublayers give a laminate. Once the programmer creates this fiber patch laminate, he then moves on to the Motion Artist module in, inside the Artist Studio software. Here, we are able to simulate the robot movements for each of these flights. Once the robot movements are checked for collision, the patch data is exported to the machine for manufacturing. Understanding part design is critical, especially when working with fiber patch composite. We include computational tools such as hypermesh, 
and it connects with Artist Studio to get the patch characteristics to support the effort. So, we introduce Analysis Guided Design Workflow. During our layout design cycle, analysis is carried out parallel or iteratively to truly evaluate each iteration. For example, we can tell whether using a longer patch in specific locations will improve load capacity or make it worse. Or just like the large conical cylinder that we study, we check overlapping the patches in specific location will offer a better performance or not. For this specific inlet duct mouth design, it becomes really clear at the analysis first shot that some area doesn't need as much of materials. This insight directly influenced the way we design the layout internally. Thanks to the precision that fiber patch placement robot can do, which you can place the fiber repeatedly onto the tool without error, we are able to design the internal layout very uniquely for each layout orientation. From the outside, the parts may appear as it's made of full plies, but if you cut through the section, you can see the difference. You can see the thickness is increased only at the regions that have the highest stress concentration. And this method we call it as free shape and sizing optimization for composite design. Once the analysis confirmed the final configurations, we share the result with the manufacturing engineers. For example, lay up only within this contour for ply number 5 to 8. For the outside, you can lay up the full ply shape to retain the part geometries. Overall, the analysis guided design workflow actually allows us to reduce the inlet duct mouth weight and still meeting the part performance requirement before the manufacturing even begins. Every part we make with FPP needs a tool to be laid up on. The 6-axis robot can hold tools up to 200 pounds. In most cases, we aim to design a tool where the composite parts can be removed like a glove after curing. But in the case of the inlet duct mouth, we faced a lot of tight edges and locking surfaces that forced us to redesign. We ended up with an assembly tool made up of four 3D printed sections that could be held together with aluminum plates on either end. Once the cure is finished, we can remove the separate tool sections from within the composite parts and pull them out one by one. After all four sections were removed, we could reassemble the tool and bring it back to the FPP system for continuous manufacturing. So far in this video, we included the design, analysis, optimization, and manufacturing, including the tool design for fiber patch placement. Next, we are going to show you the findings from a case study that we have conducted at Naira Atlas for design, optimization, and manufacturing of this conical cylinder that has a neck region, typically that is very challenging for automated fiber placement technique. We use the predicted strength of a flawless, continuous fiber part as the baseline and as the target strength for designing the optimized FPP component. To enhance performance, we ran multiple design iterations and validation exercises, strategically adding fiber patches to cylinders neck and belt regions. Based on first ply failure criteria, the predicted compressive strength of the continuous fiber design assuming no manufacturing defects was 80 KSI. We used this prediction as the baseline, although the hand layer part actually failed at 103 KSI during testing. The continuous fiber part produced with AFP, however, failed prematurely at 64 KSI due to defects in the cylinder's neck region. Through multiple design iterations, the predicted strength of the FPP part increased from 61 KSI to 82 KSI. This brought its theoretical strength close to that of the continuous fiber design with a 22% increase in weight. This progress lays the foundation for optimized FPP design that support high-rate manufacturing and expand the possibilities of automated composite fabrication. <laughs>